Good Friday afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Wait, you're on a different mic. I'm on a... Tap that? Oh, okay. It's there. All right. Okay. You're just freaking out for no reason now, huh? Is that what's I, happening? I guess so. <laughs> the, freaking, the freaking out has already started. By the way, my name is Darren. This over here is Victor, and I'll tell you more about freaking out in just a moment. And on Fridays, when we're around, we do this live stream. And we're the co-host of a podcast called DevOps Paradox, and everything's out of order right now. I don't know why. I'll explain why in a minute. And on Fridays when we're around, Help we do the show. Help me explain why if you don't know why. Okay, I'm just going to get to the story. Last night, <laughs> at my house... Okay, everybody's been seeing the hurricane that's happening out in the Atlantic. Hurricane Lee. That was not last night, but it sure almost felt like it. We had hail at our house for almost 10 minutes straight. And it, was, it wasn't big, it was pea-sized hail. But uh, let's just say that my internet went out and was out for over 12 hours. Power never went out, but I lost internet. So I didn't know what to do with myself for 12 hours other than sleep. But I know you, Darren. There is no, there is no need to explain your internet going out. It goes out oh, randomly. That's true. That's and true. you're trying now to explain randomness with the natural disasters. Okay. You should it's, work in the marketing of whomever is providing your internet connection. <laughs> You're probably having better explanation why they're out than themselves. <laughs> I, will, I will keep their I'll keep their names quiet. I'll put it that way. Jivan, good to see you, man. I think it's been a while since we've seen you live. Maybe I'm dreaming. Uh, it's just been one of those things. Who knows? Hey, Karen. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Thanks for uh, being here. Uh, you are getting ready to be gone for almost five weeks. Like Most literally, of the rest of the year, <laughs> more than five weeks. But more yeah. than five weeks, but but in a block of five weeks. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and say it now. I'll remind us again later uh, at the end of the show. We're going to be gone for five weeks, starting next Friday. So we won't be here for five Fridays. So it'll be the middle of October before we're back. Maybe we'll have something to talk about then. Who knows? Probably not. We might surprise ourselves. That will be before KubeCon. Correct? KubeCon in A. I don't remember anymore. That's November, I, I think, isn't it? We'll November, talk more about yeah. Kubernetes if in a minute, too. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Okay. Anyway, what a week. That's all I'll say. What a week. Let's get into the show. This week's podcast, we had someone on that actually lives about 10 minutes from my house. And, and it's not your wife. And it's not my wife. No, it's not. Uh, we had Dagna Bieta on. We're talking about layoff proofing your career. She is a career coach, used to be a developer. And then she said, forget this. Instead of messing with code, I'm going to mess with people's minds. So that is what she does now. And we're talking about layoff proofing the career. This was a, a little bit different episode, but not really. But I guess it was as well. What do you think? Have you, so have you ever been laid complete, off? Something completely different, yet somehow the same. Ha exactly. Have you ever been laid off? Probably not. Don't I think, think so? that I, ha I have that gift for pissing people off. So they, they, uh, they just kind of wait somehow for me to leave uh, instead of kicking me out. Yeah. I mean, I, people, they also know that I don't stay long. So kind of like he, he, he will leave soon. Why would we bother kicking him out? I heard Jivan. I haven't been around. Work life got in the way. That's what we're running into for the next five weeks mm -hmm. is work and life. Um, I've been laid off once because the company kept downsizing and downsizing and downsizing until it didn't exist anymore. So you know, that was fine. It worked out, worked out in the end for me. So I, but that only happened once, but I've been in places to where there were layoffs going on once a month. You know, the curious Gosh. thing about our industry is that more often than not layoffs and end up, not always, but very often, Hey, I, I, I'm in a different company for more money. That's usually the result of layoffs. It's almost kind of that, uh, whomever laying you off is, is uh, doing you a favor in a way. Either that, or they're just laying you off because they need to make numbers so they can get their bonus. Yeah. I won't go into an ugly story about that, but 
Anyway, lay off proofing your career if you haven't listened to it yet, episode 227. And uh, let us know. By the way, we don't talk about this enough on this show. We have there's a whole Slack workspace. It's not dedicated just to the to the podcast or to this, but it's really Victor's old, you want to call it old, old Slack workspace around DevOps 2.0. That's the, the workspace name. If you look down in the notes, by the way, if you just go out and take a look at pretty much any of the pages, there's a link to where you can sign up for the Slack workspace. Just go there. It's free. No, no cost. It's it's yeah. and it's fairly quiet too, right? There, I mean, there's there's every every once in a while there'll be a how can we say it a a rash of conversation and then it all quiets down again. <laughs> it's it's not a high, it's not like those gaming discords that you go into to where you can't keep up with all the messaging going on. It's it's a nice laid back community. Oh, let's let's answer this one. Why have layoffs when you can ask people to return to the office? Automatic, no severance. Exactly, pay. exactly. It's a it's a, an interesting angle on that thought. No worries. You just need to say what's the what's the name of that company, and you receive uh, on Twitter immediately offers come. Oh, but we are hiring. Yes, and we don't have offices, so we can't lay you off because of return to office. Exactly. Anyway, layoff proofing. Okay, couple of quick reminders. Cross planes, control plane day coming up on September 19th, virtual, all free. Sign up for it. Yep. And then this week, DevOps World. Okay, so that was Victor's day job. This is my day job. DevOps World, actually in the New York area next week, next Thursday and Friday, if I'm doing the math right. I can't do math live, especially date math. I'm having to actually do daylight date math, which is even worse. I think that's the worst of all maths. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that's coming up next week. And then also Chicago, Silicon Valley, and Santa Clara, Singapore, and London later in the year. Okay. <coughs> Bless you. Twice. Oh, my. Is that going to be the set in each of them? I don't know. I haven't seen the set. It looks cool. It is. I, th I thought this is one of the, uh, the more interesting ones over the past few years. Of course, then we have this random shark that's laying right here in the back. See it behind DevOps World in the center of the screen? It's just a shark yeah. there. So is it, are we going to have Sharknados? Did you ever watch the five Sharknados movies? No, and I'm proud of that. You should. There is nothing better than Sharknado movies. Nothing. Okay. Except okay. the original Independence Day. The original <laughs> Independence Day was really good. The, the follow-up to Independence Day, not so good. It was fine, not so good. Uh, this was an interesting tweet I saw this week. SQLite, which by the way, the head guy of that lives in the town that I'm in. Used in every phone and browser in the world has th three developers. Millions of tests and no manual testers other than the three of them. Don't tell me you need a one-to-one -one tester to engineer ratio for your mission critical system. No, of course you don't. It's just silly. SQLite, and this thread goes way deep, so I'm not going to get into any of the, the thread here. SQLite's actually gone beyond the universe. Right. It's been in the, or embedded in the satellites that have gone, was it Voyager that went beyond the edge of the universe? <coughs> Whichever one it was. Yeah. All by three people. In a public domain, it's... not even open source. For, today, this week, we don't have any OpenTF or HashiCorp news. I sort of did that on purpose. This is public domain. <laughs> I would extend that. I would say that actually, I mean, there are other uh, areas where you have one-to-one -one ratio. Hey, we have uh, as many sysadmins as developers or whatever other areas are, right? Kind of, that's all wrong. The, the vast majority of people should, must be developers. The, everything else is, uh, it must be infinitely lower in number, right? If it's not, you're doing something wrong, terribly wrong. Anyway, I saw this tweet. Anytime I see SQLite, it's just because it's close, literally close to home to me. It's like, got to bring this one up, especially when they bring in weird things like one-to-one -one testing to engineering. Okay. Tomorrow. Do you know what tomorrow is, Victor? Besides it being Saturday? Saturday. Oh. In, in most of the world. September 9th. September 9th. Do you know what yes. September 9th signifies? I happen to know only because you told me a few minutes before the show. It was the first release of Kubernetes in 2014. 
0 0.2, right? So not the first official release, if you will, but a release. Yeah. Well, which year was that? 14? 2014, okay, so nine, nine years ago nine tomorrow. Nine years ago. Yep, and if you take oh, a okay. look at this page, the release timeline, the first 1.0 was July of 2015. So we'll so, talk about this again in July. This is a message to all you companies who are requiring uh, 15 years of experience with Kubernetes for, from your candidates. Do the math. Okay. That'll be one of the clips for this week. Um, by the way, I need to teach you some new stuff about YouTube Shorts that I learned this week. Okay. Do you want to do it live? It doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, I prefer just as long as they, you're not going to tell me that they need to be short. Uh, that's because that's the only no. information I know. No, 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 that's not it. Anyway, Kubernetes birthday coming up. So what are we going to do about for the tenth birthday? Have you thought about that yet? We, we have a year to plan. Yeah, we'll it's, see. Something will be planned. I'm pretty sure of that. Yes. Okay. A couple of Amazon items this week. Farewell EC2 Classic, it's been swell. This is from uh, Werner Vogels, I think is this is his. All Things Distributed? Yeah, I think it's his, if not. Anyway, two years ago, they shut down, or announcing that they were going to be shutting down EC2 Classic, which I haven't used in years. And at least a few of you didn't think we'd actually flip the switch. August 15th, we shut down the last instance of Classic. Yeah. It's been it's been a while. So that was since we're doing date math today, two thousand seven to twenty twenty three. So sixteen years. Uh, no, but Ballpark. how long has it been since whatever they call it now, non classic? It's been around for a long time now, right? EC two is to, Yep, so, so EC two has been around for seventeen years in, in whole. SQS oh, I keep forgetting about SQS. Only SQS and S3 are older. I keep forgetting about SQS being older. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I thought that S3 is the first service, right? That's, it is, yeah. It was yeah. the first one. And then what makes it classic? Network architecture. Launched in 2006. Anyway, if you had launched an instance, an M1 small, which, by the way, you can still launch. Don't know why you would. A virtual CPU that was the equivalent of a 1.7 Xeon processor with 1.75 gig of RAM. 160 gig of disk and 250 meg of bandwidth. 250 meg. I have more than that. Now it's gone up. I'm not even going to try to say that because it's too many letters in a row. Providing 100 gig of network throughput, 96 vCPUs, 8 NVIDIA, NVIDIA 4 V100 Tensor Core GPUs with 32 gig of RAM of each for a 768 gig total system memory and 1.8 terabyte local storage. Things have changed. Yeah. But anyway, uh, very, very interesting write up saying goodbye, so long, farewell, don't let the door hit you in the butt. <laughs> Is that the first service they're retiring completely? I wouldn't be surprised. I think you're right. I can't think of any others. Because it's not Google. Google <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. things <laughs> randomly. Kind of like, <laughs> uh, I would be, you know, I expect to wake up one morning and, say, and find out that Gmail is not anymore active. <laughs> that one would tick me off because I'm paying for it. For, uh, I'm paying for, not Gmail specifically. You're but paying for uh, Workspace, Google Apps. Right? Or, yeah. yeah, Google yeah. Apps. Yeah, me too. yeah, which I'm considering moving off to something else, but that's a different conversation. I was paying for Stadia as well. Uh, but at least you got a free controller out of it. I got all the money back from all the games I paid. It's the best deal I did in my life. Kind of what usage do I have from the games that I played in the past? I'm not coming back to them. No. Uh, but anyway, it was, it was pretty funny here. The uh, EC2 Classic got a certificate of completion. 16.83 years. And off it goes. Yeah, it is Werner's. There you go. So, that was pretty cool. One more piece of Amazon information. EBS is now 15 years old, which sort of coincides with EC2. 
and EBS feels like it's being that old as well. <laughs> yep. The first EBS volume was announced in August of 2008. So that was actually two years after EC2 Classic. Yeah. So you didn't even have EBS to begin with. That's interesting. That sort of makes sense because you really didn't need it in a classic format. You had a sliced up machine. But anyway, EBS. This, this was the interesting part here. I asked the EBS team to quantify customer usage in 2023, 15th year, blah, blah, blah. Focusing first on daily usage, EBS delivers more than 100 trillion IO ops per day. When I first started working on database engines back 30 years ago, hosting 100 trillion IOPS per day would have required more than 11 million disk drives. Yeah, we changed. But then, even more staggering is EBS transfers more than 13 exabytes of data every day. In other words, it's big. It's, it's, not, yep. it's not the business in, uh, in a shed anymore. Right. This article estimates that five exabytes is the equivalent of all words ever spoken by humans since the dawn of time. So they're doing two and a half times that daily. Yeah, they're just proving that we did not speak much in the past. Yeah. Okay. That's all we did, because now all we do is thumb scroll screens. Yeah, but now if you count all the words spoken, uh, that includes YouTube and TikTok. Uh... <laughs> the numbers change. But anyway, EBS, 15 years. Uh, that's interesting. Keeps getting... It's like it, going back to, was this the first one that AWS had retired and thinking through Google? It's like, I've lost track how many things from a GCP perspective that has been retired. Yeah, to be like, honest... Just, now, when I hear some announcement from Google or something new, I assume it will be killed by default. So right. kind of like, I get surprised if it doesn't. Unless that something is related to AdWords. No, if it's related to ads, then I have full confidence that something is here to stay. Everything else, nobody knows. We'll see. Okay, so those were the AWS announcements that I thought were interesting this week. Flux 2.1 came out this week. Okay. So here are the new things. Lots mm -hmm. of new features, which sort of scares me for a dot one or a, a two dot one, right? I would expect big new features to be in a three, but I'll go with it for a moment. Uh, Flux APIs were extended with new opt-in features for backwards compatibility. Great. The Flux Git cap capabilities have been improved with support for Git push RefSpec, Garrett, and proxies. Probably mm -hmm. a good one. Uh, but here's here's the features. So your repository API has a new field, proxy secret ref. Okay. And enterprise feature. Yep. Spec verify mode accepts one of the head, tag, tag, and head. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Okay. Server side apply. Okay. And oh, this is interesting. Image update automation has two new fields. Get push ref spec and get push options to specify when pushing commits upstream. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. one I just skipped right over here. Support for sending notifications to Datadog. <laughs> okay. I mean, I was sort of surprised that was was there. Deprecated a few things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of those notifications that everybody wants and nobody needs at the end, right? Kind of. Right. You, you have no idea how many systems I've worked in when we happily implemented things like, hey, everybody should be notified when there is a new release. <laughs> and then nobody read those notifications ever. Ever. You learn to get concise when you send those types of notifications. Hey, yes. new release, here's the link, have a nice day. No, it's especially, so if you're talking about vendor releases, like uh, whatever you work on me and stuff like that which are happening let's say once a quarter once three months four months one month then you say hey i want to know what's happening right but in a company that now hopefully is pushing multiple releases a day not necessarily multiple of the same project but within a company multiple releases are happening a day do you want to be notified of that probably not it needs to become boring kind of like oh yeah 
So, no. There is goi. No, no, there is. We were. There has been. Has, uh, right. we, it's not kind of flux, flux, but Weaver's has UI that can visually fl visualize flux. Now, don't ask me in comments for how, how it looks like, but uh, it exists. If you look on the left nav here, you see there's a point right below the April 2023. It says how to use Weave GitOps as your Flux UI. I can't, you can't yeah, see exactly. my mouse. Exactly. So Weave GitOps, that's the name. True. Yeah. Uh, some dashboards, flagger, and some other things. Some new adopters. Okay. And new contributors. All right. So anyway, interesting. So Flux 2.1. Nice. Huh. We, we, sorry, okay, we'll keep moving on. Um, this was an article I saw this week that I thought was interesting. Unpinnable actions, how malicious code can sneak into your GitHub workflows. You have action workflows, sorry, to finish the sentence. Mm -hmm. This is from Palo Alto, and it's actually from Prisma Cloud, which Palo Alto owns. So, go away, thank you. So it talks about action pinning. So what they mean by this is, actually setting the SHA for your action, right? Don't just set a version, don't say latest. Uh, because the author of that action can update it and without, you, and you, you, you just keep using it because you're using it ahead or something like that. Right, so pinning an action to a full length commit SHA is currently the only way to use an action as an immutable release. Yeah. Pinning to a particular SHA helps mitigate the risk of a bad actor, blah, 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 blah. But then they go through this and saying, uh, no, you can still do it. You can still compromise it. Oh, really? So, yeah. So it ser serves the important recommendation of pinning the action serves this, which is one of the OWASP top CICDs. When a user pins an action to a full commit hash, the pipeline downloads a, sna a snapshot of the action containing all the commits up until the pinned commit. I think this is where the problem is. Attackers may attempt to compromise the third-party GitHub action via command injection to its workflow, or repo jacking or doing other things. I'm going to say what I say to, to all the companies that contact me and show me their GitHub actions. Because companies contact me, can you look at this uh, project we're working on? I say yes, and we go through it and stuff like that. And very often it, it ends up, okay, and we have GitHub action. And my question is always the same. So you have CLI, right? It's a single command to do this. Yes. Why do you need GitHub action? I don't understand. I honestly don't. But it's doing something complicated, yes. But so literally, that GitHub action is executing a single command, X, Y, Z. And people, people buy, people like it. I, I, I cannot understand, for the love of God, why would anybody use GitHub predefined steps for anything that is equivalent to one or a few shell commands. I am rewriting part of the workflow that I have. By the way, I went through your command line. I have questions for your Which YouTube. command line? Your YouTube command line. Oh, you went through it, okay. I did. You I, like I, it? Yeah, right? I, I, I have questions, but okay. Okay. I, 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 need to, I need to go through it again to actually write the questions down. But anyway, <laughs> I'm rewriting the process that I use for processing the podcast episode. There's, I have a, a Jenkins pipeline that does a lot of things. There's, I, I say a lot, this, it does seven different things. And because of some other things going on, I need to actually rewrite that. Well, do you remember task, the, the task okay. CLI? Yeah, it's basically, here, I'll pull it up real quick. We, we've talked about them before, task.dev, nope, taskfile.dev, task. I can't remember their URL. Yeah, task. Okay. There's a task. It's like make, right? Yeah. It's yeah, just, okay. but a little more simplistic than make, which is good. Yeah. A lot easier to maintain. So I'm rewriting that whole Jenkins pipeline into task. And then my mm -hmm. Jenkins file is going to turn into calling task, which is okay. exactly what you were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, why do those things anyway? Why were we talking about this? So pinning an action to a full commit hash protects us from this supply chain attack, right? Uh, no. So how they abuse it. So they go through this whole scenario of explaining why that's not safe. Even the full 
Shaw. Mm. So well, I would recommend if you have time this weekend, grab a child friendly beverage, not a, an adult friendly beverage and read this. <laughs> Because you're going to need to be fully aware as you're reading this. Because it gets a little a little deep. But they, they go through the whole thing in a very good way. Of course, going back to um, you need Prisma Cloud. Uh, if you haven't discovered the Prisma Cloud advantage, uh, then yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's fine. And that's fine. I mean, I, I thought it's this fine. was a, a phenomenal, phenomenal article. And it made me think because I'm one of the ones that has just, you know, said, use the full commit shaw. Don't, never use latest. I mean, don't worry I'm about the semantic. I'm pretty sure that this article still does not say it's better not to use SHA than to use SHA. Correct. Because especially since that's what the OWASP recommendation is to do as well. Right? So that's fine. It's still better, but it doesn't mean that you're fully covered based on how they went about it. Okay. Anyway, good article. By the way, everything should be posted up later today because I don't have time to deal with it tomorrow. Deal with it tomorrow? Sorry, I don't mean to say deal with it. Uh, I just need to get everything done today. Okay, uh, some tools. There's a couple here that you may like. We'll see. Okay. We'll see if the last one ends up being something that you just say, eh, whatever. The first one is Kubero, is how I'm going to say it. I don't know if it's correct, but uh -huh. I'm, I'm the one with the microphone right now, and that's how I'm going to say it. A pass for Kubernetes. Use Heroku workflows to deploy your app. Okay. So let's see here. Cron jobs, autoscale, CLI, GitOps, all the buzzwords are being uh, used that, here. That's, I mean, this might be fantastic. I never saw that something like that work. Kind of, when I see a new project and kind of there are 57 different things that are baked in and you can, you, we can combine all those uh, that never, haven't worked as far as, I, I haven't seen it work yet. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm by default and I could be proven wrong, I'm negative towards, hey, we managed to combine the whole world into this service. My first, now this may be great. Maybe. But I already lost Let's call it, they lost five points for me out of 10 because they don't know how to spell GitHub correctly. <laughs> Where is it? Well, it is it is GitHub, but it's a, they have lower H's instead of upper H's. Okay. <laughs> right? I mean, get the name right. And then- yeah, My SQL was spelled correctly, so. It was, and a few others were, but especially since you have it twice in the header, get it right. Yeah. Anyway. Looks interesting. We'll see if it is or not. Uh, oh, this is pretty funny. Um, sounds like they actually use build packs, if I remember reading through some of this. Actually, I've been looking at a couple yeah, of different second, ones. The second. Uh, yeah, build packs. build packs. Yeah, yeah you're so right. It's a collection of tools, kind of. They're going to put yeah. all the tools together, right? The problem is that it, it always ends up being overly complicated uh, and uh, or you know, one of the problems is that it's often enough that you disagree with one of the 57 opinions for the whole story to break apart. Right. A pass for Kubernetes, which is a pass. No, Kubernetes is not pass. Kubernetes IaaS. is a base for building pass. Yes. Could you call it an IaaS, though? Could you call Kubernetes an IaaS? What is I? Infrastructure I as a service. Could you? It's, it's no, nothing. not even that. Kubernetes to me is nothing. It's it just, uh, it's nothing. It's useless uh, by itself. It's it's supposed to be used for others to build something useful for you. Don't use Kubernetes out of the box. I had a question. Have you ever seen this phrase, cloud native, a member of cloud native landscape? Yeah, that's very popular now because kind of, how can you get, uh, get the traction of uh, being in CNCF without being in CNCF? So we had, I'm not going to name name, we have that show, right, in, in Devil's Toolkit with, uh, where we go through all the tools within certain area of the CNCN and landscape, landscape, right? And I had a couple of requests kind of uh, from people involved in specific projects. Hey, but 
why didn't you put us? Why aren't we in that category? Uh, do you dislike us? Kind of, but no, you're not in CSA. Oh no, yeah, we are sponsoring. All the companies are sponsoring CNCF. According to that, pro that definition, uh, AWS itself, all their services are CNCF. Isn't anything basically on the landscape? Unfortunately not. Or fortunately yeah. not, which way you want to look at it. Yeah, I, when I saw that, that logo there, I went, what the heck is this? Anyway. Yeah, I remember, yeah, everybody's a member. Anyway, Kubero. Good, better, and different. Maybe it's cool. Know. So don't. Yeah. Kubero people, don't interpret me say being negative as. No, I just. That's my default reaction. Uh, I might try it one day and discover it's great. Just like any developer, what is your initial answer? No. Right? That's just the default answer. No. Exactly. Now prove it. <laughs> uh, let's see here. JQ. Have oh. you done a brew update? JQ 1.7 after okay. five years. JQ is one of those tools that I assume is never changing. Kind of like it never crossed my mind to upgrade it, to be honest. After a five year hiatus, we're back with a GitHub organization, new admins, new maintainers who've brought a great deal of energy to make a long awaited and long needed new release. That feels very chat GPT generated, but I'm sure it wasn't. A. Hey, JQ and YQ are indispensable. If you would ask me, give me 50 tools without which you cannot live, it's on that list. Yep. We're grateful for all the new owners, admins, and maintainers. Special thanks go to Owen. I'm not going to try the last name for pushing to set up a new GitHub org for JQ. Stephen Dolan, who was the guy maintaining it for ever for transferring the JQ repository to the new org, new work, and everything else. So 1.7. So here, are the things that matter. It now lives at a different place. So if you need to go look it up, there it is. New maintainers, great. News with markdown format. Yay, whatever. Um, all the CI scans, whatever, is GitHub Actions. I'm not sure what it was before. So it's Did, really cleaning the house. It's just getting it all set up and ready to go and release builds for all the things. And container images are now available instead of Docker Hub, okay, and OSS yeah. OS. So anyway, so let's look at this. There's some CLI changes. This is probably what we care about. And I, on purpose, <coughs> did not look at this because I wanted to see your reaction to some of these, see if these okay. make any difference to you. Make object key color configurable using JQ colors environment variable. Yeah, don't use that. Don't use that, great. Change the default color of null to bright black. Okay. Whatever. Respect no color environment variable. Okay. So it's all color there. Improved help output. That was probably, that help was sort of insane. Yeah. It was noisy. Uh, but it wasn't insane, it was noisy. Yeah, it's been a while. Like, I don't remember. The well, it was just, it, it wasn't. So think about how a Cobra help looks like. You know, anything that comes okay. out of Cobra, it wasn't that. <laughs> okay. It was the exact opposite okay. of that. Okay. Uh, which, again, nothing against whoever's, whoever was maintaining it before. It's just that was a low thing to deal with. Yeah. Uh, multiple issues of exit code using that. Okay, binary. Don't care. Separated output. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it looks some weird, weird changes there. Use decimal number of literals to preserve precision. Okay. Yeah. Built-in pick stream. Oh, okay. There we go. I mean, there is a limit to how much excitement yeah. you can generate with something like JQ, right? It, it's doing everything it's supposed to do and already, right? Yeah. Anyway, there is a new version of JQ. So if all of a sudden you've, you're still using JQ and it updated out from underneath you and things aren't working, that could be it. JQ. 1.7 after five years. Amazing. Hey, Bill. Good to see you. Hey. Uh, Luther, I have I've heard about it, but I don't know what the the things are. Have you heard about I don't this? Know. We're not talking about the 
BSL, we are talking about different now. So. Different, the, yeah, it's, it's registry changes. I heard about it yesterday, but I haven't looked at it personally, so I don't really have anything official. Not that I have anything official to say about it anyway, yeah, but I nothing, mean, I, an informed decision or an informed conversation about it. We can, I have no opinion either. What I can say is that whatever the comments are about the license of open source project, that's very different from their registry, it's their registry. They can do whatever and they have full right, no judgment to do whatever they want. Okay. Um, next one. Oh, the DDoSify guys who we had on a few weeks ago opens or announced this project, the ALAS is how I'm going to say it, the eBPF agent. Okay. An open source DDoSify eBPF agent that can be in, that can inspect and collect Kubernetes service traffic without the need for code instrumentation, sidecars, or service restarts. Okay. Okay. Nice. That's it. So, and it's, uh, that's what's part of that's also in their DDoSify cloud. But then you can run this as well under AGPL if you want to run it. Nice. Okay. Um, this is a little bit off the beaten path. Do you read a lot of books, a lot of ebooks? I haven't read the book in years. Okay, then you won't care about this. Um, I saw this Librem, a simple and free ebook reader. It's open source, it's on GitHub, under GPL3, okay, whatever. And it just gives you a different way to do collections and management of this kind of stuff. So if you don't want to have lock in like the old one was called what was it called i see it in my head it was just bad it wasn't it wasn't a good a good reader anyway supposedly this is going to be a lot better i've seen a lot of people talking about it already so it's called librum if you're if you're an ebook reader take a look at it <coughs> back in the days when i was devouring books at a tremendous rate i simply liked kindle didn't they try anything else? Yeah, I buy pretty much everything on Kindle. There's very few. Yeah, it's just Unless... convenient, and it's uh, kind of Kindle itself is almost free, and it works yeah. well. And, and the ability to get—I don't know whether you have—I have that. Um, I don't know whether that's still a thing. That model that actually gets uh, gets a connection for free from wherever, so I can mm -hmm. download the book wherever I am. It's brilliant. Yeah, when they had cellular built in, I don't know if they still sell cellular or not. I Cause I had, my first two Kindle devices both had cellular. I still have the first one and the second one. Neither of them boot anymore. Time to send them in and buy a new one. Okay, here comes the tool that you may or may not like. Mm -hmm. It is called Core. At least that's what I'm calling it. Kubernetes Orphaned Resource Finder. Okay. A tool, a tool to discover unused Kubernetes resources. That's currently, cool. currently, you can only find these types of resources. Yeah, and then you, I mean, uh, you know, there are some things I don't understand there, but okay. Like stateful set, what do you mean not used? Maybe it is, maybe the stateful set doesn't have anything running in it. Because I don't know what the math zero? is. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's the case, yeah. Because to me, it doesn't make sense to have a stateful set unless there's actually something running, right? Yeah, I mean, the same for deployments, really. It doesn't make yeah. sense. Neither of those two doesn't make sense to scale to zero, but yeah, you can find. If that's the logic, yes. Config maps and secrets are easier to me to digest because, hey, it is used by some something else, right? I guess that unused meaning is something using this. Is it mapped? Right. Is it injected somewhere else? Exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, yeah, I need to go through a project. Uh, potentially cool, nice. Yep. And it's been around for a while, but the, the new release just came out yesterday. And MIT licensed, since we're getting into licensing. Cool. Uh, your video for this week. Yes. Uh, I'm a bit repeating myself, but yeah. Uh, development environments plus network mirroring in one tool. That's the summary, right? So think of it like telepresence plus I don't know, octet. Something like that. That's the summary of it. Watch the video for yeah. the rest. And it's a shorter one. It's only 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I don't, uh, I don't go crazy. 
Okay. What else do we have? Okay, so I will remind everybody else since we have more people on right now. We are not going to be around for five, count them, five weeks. I'm due to one, next week is due to me, and the other four are due to him. So it's not only me. It's not, no, it's not only you. For a change. Now, there is a small chance we might do next week, but I'm talking uh, half this bottle, by the way. Come on, focus. <laughs> Don't focus on me. There we go. Focus on the okay. bottle. I don't have a link. Actually, if you go out to any of the podcast, most of the recent podcasts, Barbara Moho has been one of our sponsors for on the podcast. And I just yeah. keep a bottle here by the by the camera. I could drink half this bottle right now. Um, how would I relate that back to not being here next week? Um, I can't. So anyway. <laughs> I'm just trying to come up with something that didn't work. Okay, so is there anything else we need to cover? You're at a conference next week, in the week after, in the week after. In the week after in the week after yeah i think that i have very very small number of days at home until december something like that december yeah. but then tremendous number of days at home next year which is a good thing for yeah. all parties involved especially me yeah because i'm not having to chase you down <laughs> Uh, back for KubeCon. Are you ready for KubeCon yet? Other than going to eat pizza? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I'm assuming that if it's referring to Chicago, I'm not even speaking there. So, hey, this is the first time I got to KubeCon without speaking. So, uh, it's going to be fun. That's, that's good and bad, right? Are you going to... I saw that DockerCon was actually in person this year. Are you going? I'm persona non grata. Ah, sorry. Didn't mean to go there. I can't scrub that no, out. No, it's, it's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm joking. I'm not persona non grata, but I'm not attached to jo I mean, whoever watches the, the channel knows the time. I'm not attached to Docker. I'm not. Yeah. What they're doing is, I think that the direction makes perfect sense. I would do the same as what they're doing right now. I think that they messed up in the past, and that's it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I think we're, we've covered all the news. We're off for five weeks, at least here. Now, the podcast still keeps coming out on Wednesdays, every Wednesday. Because I still am going to be editing those, right? I'm not done for all five weeks in a row yet. Yeah, they're, and they're not live, so. They're not live. Correct. Uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else we need to cover I th since we're going to be gone for so long? It's like, you know, when you're getting ready to go on vacation and you're packing and it's like, okay, I need this, I need this, I need this. What am I forgetting to tell? Did, did I... Did I put the mail on hold? Did I cancel the paper? I, okay, I don't get a paper anymore. But anyway, I used to. That's why, Darin, that's why we have shops at the airport. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. the purpose of the shops of the airport? Otherwise, why do they exist? Just buy what you need when you land and go from there. Exactly. I don't know. I, I know I've never the, been able the, to go there. The key there is that when you get to the security check at the airport, right? You need to pack your laptop in a suitcase so that you're forced to open it and get it out. And that's your opportunity to find out what you're missing. That's the most effective way to find it out. As long as, well, like happened to me in Chicago one time. I'm waiting at the baggage claim, waiting at baggage claim, bag never shows up. So I have nothing, literally nothing, except my computer. Chicago in winter or summer? It was the end of winter because I went to a store to go buy clothes. And then you know, in, in summer you can get away with, with two t-shirts and underwear. <laughs> well, I was on site at a client, so no, I couldn't get, get away with t-shirts, okay. unfortunately. Uh, but it turns out somebody had grabbed my bag thinking it was their bag. They'd left their bag behind, even though our bags, they look similar, but mine was about two times the size of theirs. But they thought that was theirs instead of mine. What can you do? I am trying my best to never get on a plane again, I think. Uh, there I said it. I'm trying my best you to never to, get on a plane. Gonna come to CubeCon Paris with the boat? That would actually be pretty fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd be different. Of course, no, I don't like boats. I'll get on a plane for that. Okay. Enough rambling. 
Thanks everybody for being here. I saw the, the over in the chat, everybody's talking about the OpenTF and the registry stuff. I'm not gonna step into that because I haven't read it enough and I don't wanna, anytime I say something, at least I've thought about it at least for five minutes. I'm not gonna think out loud on something like that. <laughs> what I will say is that people need to start making a, uh, understanding the difference between ownership and the license, right? Being open source does not mean that it's not owned by a single company. And when you own something, you can do whatever you want to that something. That's not judgment. That's simply how it is. It's like, do you remember those days when you go to the store and buy a CD or buy a DVD? You don't own that movie. You don't own that music. You have a... So an exclusive license to use that for personal consumption. Here's a scenario, and you, I want you to tell me how that, whether that would be different in any form of way and how that would be different from the scenario of changing the license. Okay. Imagine that Terraform, uh, HashiCorp decided not to put a single man hour into maintenance of Terraform. Okay. And maybe themselves fork Terraform for commercial purposes. The last state is just the same, but HashiCorp says we are not actually doing all the work anymore. Correct. Would that make any difference compared Zero to the current situation? Zero, Zero difference. difference. No difference. Yeah. Essentially, the change of the license is HashiCorp saying we are not maintaining this anymore. They could have yeah. forked it, same result. Yep, it's the exact same, exact same, because then you would have abandoned at one point, whatever is it, 155, I think is the current tag, or whatever that commit was, you abandoned it at that point and gone off and done something else. And that's completely fine. Completely fine, exactly. Hmm. Uh, I've been speaking a lot about that whole situation this week and last week. And the summary is, this is a test of how open open source is. Two years from now, I'm going to take a look at the activity at OpenTF, and then I'm going to say what I think about it. Yeah. It's too early to make a call on it, in my opinion. Yeah. So give it, I, and I think you're right. It can't be a year. It's got to be two years. There's got to be enough yeah. runway to actually Please see what a year, a year, it will be so much enthusiasm that random people will be contributing random stuff. This is the Gartner hype cycle, right? This is yeah. the Gartner hype cycle. We're starting to go up. And then it's going to go to the trough of disillusionment and then it'll level out to something. Whether that exactly. level is at the bottom or somewhere happy or high. Yeah. And I'm not saying in any form of way that the, where it will go. I just want to see yeah. it, right? Yeah. Uh, Jenkins did something similar with Hudson and it was yeah. very successful. So that's a success story, right? Now I want yeah. to see whether this will be the same. Yep. I've heard lots of comparisons to that and it's a different beast. But it's a very, I mean, it's a very different list, yeah, and a very different time also. I mean, yeah. You know, when, ha when Jackies became split from Hudson, most people did not even yet know what's going on, kind of like, did not yeah. even hear about, yeah, kind of, you heard the word open source, but nobody even really understood what open source is at that time. I mean, nobody, majority. I mean, that's 20-ish years now, I think, almost close to it now. Well, all right. Victor, have a good five weeks. I won't see. I, you. I, th I think I will see you once in five weeks. That's amazing. Because you like you. it. Because I looked at his calendar availability, and literally between now and the middle of October, I think he's home four days, three days, including weekends. Hmm. Nope, not anymore. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else that popped up in here. Nope. I will, okay, I will take Bill's comment here, which I agree. Whoops, mm. where'd it go, Bill? There it is. OpenTF has to land in, I'm gonna say fill in the blank. It has to land, it has to land in a foundation. It has to be accepted into a foundation, I think, in order for it to. Yeah, because otherwise what's yeah. the difference between one open source owned by somebody versus other open source owned by somebody, yeah. right? It is to be owned by an independent entity, which would be a separate discussion how CNCF is independent or no. And the second thing it needs to happen is to have a long-term 
budget from different companies for dedicated uh, maintainers, right? Without dedicated maintainers, there is no project. No, impossible, right? Dedicated maintainers sponsored long-term by companies. If that happens, then yeah, it will be great. If what, it follow what people don't understand is that I'm throwing a random number here, but I would, my guess would be that maybe 5% of open source contributions come from non-sponsored contributions. People think that it's the other way around, but you need sponsored contributions. I agree. You got to feed the people somehow. Now, the, here's another question. Okay. Uh, how many of those pledging to OpenTF, how many people were full-time or seriously involved in, in Terraform, right? Because do we know even the code base? I'm asking because I don't know. I'm not judging here yeah. again, right? I'm, I'm pulling up OpenTF right now. So I'm for, speaking now mostly about yeah. individual kind of, do we have two people who were core maintainers on Terraform uh, or one at least? Based on conversations that I listened to this week, if you were to take a look at the commit history of the Terraform repository over the past few years, there were primarily two committers and two other committers that were off and on. That was it. Exactly. And I'm guessing that that's all HashiCorp employees. They were all Hashi. Yeah, they were only HashiCorp. Who Ford. did not quit. I'm guessing. Then we have don't a know. problem. Yeah. We have a serious problem. I mean, we don't. Somebody does. So I will say here, if we take a look at the top five, these are the ones that have committed to sponsoring. Actually, to, uh, four of the top five have what committed to full-time employee. So you're talking about the sponsorship, right? Really? Yeah. So you've got 18 FTEs committed for at least five years. That's more than Terraform had uh, ever. Right. Okay, that's amazing. I don't so believe if, it, but that's amazing. So if, if this becomes true, would you say, look back in two years? Yeah. Right. Amazing. And hopefully, hopefully the community is talking about it, about how it's going throughout the time. Then that makes a difference. Yeah. And a long list of other things going on. There's actually a few others cost of one FTE for at least two years. So it's just a matter of cool. going through these. So actually here, let's see how many FTEs are showing here. Can you do math live? Cause I can't. Okay, 5, 18. 10, 15, 18, 19, 19. No, oh, 19 is a big number. 19 about, people dedicated to a project is a huge number. Yeah. Now, will it happen? We'll have to wait and see. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for being here live. Uh, again, we'll be back in roughly five weeks. I don't even know what the date is. I should look that up. But um, while we're not here, listening to the podcast, sign up in the Slack channel, do all the things that you would typically do. And uh, we will see you again in five weeks. We might show up, but realistically, we won't. We'll just say it that way. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend.